Now that we are driving headfirst into November and the verbal sparring that will captivate and likely sometimes bore America to tears with these standard insults and one-liners, nothing is more important than the strategy both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton will employ, seeking to curry favor with the decided and, more to the point of importance, the undecided voters. Talk to the insiders, and a consensus will be for Trump to dig himself out of the various holes his bombastic maw has created for him, and for Hillary to dig herself out of the numerous holes created by a lifetime of government service, not all of which is the stuff of a positive resume. Your comments on the race, the chase, and where we stand today with a Republican Party in desperate need of some solid leadership, you need to be queuing up right now at 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629, because we're heading for your words in mere moments. Be ready when called. Make your point. Stay on point. Be part of the only network that prides itself on including your calls. Let's dig in, talk about strategy with a longtime Republican strategist who has been involved in campaigns since 1980, gets major chops from me for having a taste for good Kentucky bourbon, and shocked everybody back in May when she announced a switch from Republican to Libertarian. Pleasure to welcome Mary Madeline to the hard line. Mary, thanks so much. And we one of these... call that brown liquor. <laughs> brown liquor. <laughs> I knew you were going to start that way. That's perfect. I, I, I wish you were here right now because we could have this conversation over some brown liquor and we could enjoy it. Uh, look, let me get right to the point here about libertarian because, as I said, people went, wait, Mary Madeline's gone libertarian. Hey, wait a minute. That's not a bad thing right now, because if you look at this, Gary Johnson sitting in here, that's a former two-term governor of New Mexico. Former Mass Governor Bill Weld is his running mate. The Libertarians right now have more executive elected experience on their ticket than Mrs. Clinton or Mr. Trump at this point. And I'll tell you, Mary, be honest, they got a little shot of kind of making some noise here, don't they? Not if Gary Johnson says... He agrees with 73% of Bernie Sanders' positions. I was for Austin <laughs> Peterson, and you should have him on, because when I say libertarian, I don't mean it in the way the media portrays a libertarian party. I mean it as classical liberalism, which is really what original republicanism was, it, which means limited government regulations you can understand, et cetera, et cetera. They're not... They, and there, but there is the highest percentage of support for a, a pragmatic, credible third party. Forty-four percent of people said they would vote for a third party person. I think Gary Johnson giving interviews stoned and saying he agrees with Bernie is <laughs> does not add up to credibility. Although I I do like him. I like his record as governor, and I like Bill Weld. But I'm for a set of principles. I'm not for people. And the Republican Party has abandoned those principles that caused me to join them in the first place. And I, they're, they are really like the Democratic Party. Government keeps growing, intrusions into our life keep growing. So I'm still supporting Republicans. Colonel Manis is running for the Senate in Louisiana. I'll be supporting all the Republicans there. But I can't support the, the Republican nominee until I know what his principles are. Do you know what his principles are? Do you know one principle? Just give me a principle. I like to stay as neutral as humanly possible in this, but I could tell you that there are those out there, and of course you know this as well, there are those who would say that Donald Trump has no principles and certainly hasn't given us anything but invectives and cliches. I don't accept, I understand that attraction. People, particularly constitutionalists and common sense conservatives and really just common sense mainstream Americans are just sick of some distant establishment, and I don't just mean political establishment, some ruling class establishment that decides what the issues are that we should pay attention to. I'm sorry, I do not get up and make a pot of tea and start worrying about transgender bathrooms. That's just not on the top of my priorities. In case okay, so they're angry about that, they're angry that they've sent so many pragmatic, uh, liberty-minded, back-to-basics uh, conservative, I don't even want to call them conservatives, just good people to Congress and Congress has done nothing. So they're angry, and they're rightly angry, and Trump disabuses all of those premises. So I like that about him, and I like that he's a macro messenger. I just don't know what the messages is, are. And if I was on that campaign, which I would never be, and they would never have me, <laughs> I would say there's a huge difference between appealing to a, a, an angry primary electorate and an angry general electorate. He is he is barely 
even with women right now, married white women, and Romney won them by some 14 points or something like that. You can't, and I'm not an identity politics person, I'm just saying you got to get to 50% plus one, and you have to have, you, you can't be about you. The number one, 101, top of the list, or strategic thing is uh, campaigns are always about the voters. They're not about him. They're not about his court cases. They're about the people. And he started there, and now he's coming, verging back into himself and his ratings and all that. That's just not going to work in the general election. So I'm let me ask this be for Hillary, but he's he's got to understand that you you have to have some policy understanding. You don't have to be a nerd about it, but you have to give some semblance that when these di- the issues come across your desk in the Oval Office, you're not going to go, hey, what should I say to get me higher ratings on TV? That's just not what people are looking for. So let me do this. I only got 30 seconds left here then. In your strategic mind then, what is it that Donald Trump can do, should do, must do, in order to prove to people that he has those qualities that you're indicating he needs to have in order to get elected? Can he do it? He needs to say, here's my five principles. Okay, there are a lot of smart people that know how to do these policies. I'm very smart, but I care about national security. I care in peace through strength, however he wants to say it, or I care about energy development, developing and exploiting our natural resources. I care about your individual liberty. I care about taking those excessive regulatory strangulation burdens off your life so you can start businesses. And I care about reforming education and giving it back to the state so our kids can grow up and carry on as we were allowed to carry on. And that's all I have to say he should do. That would be easy. Ten seconds. Do you expect him to ever say that? Ever hear those words? Well, I think he hasn't wrapped his mind around um, the responsibility he has, not just to his countrymen in this country, but to the world. And if he could get his head in a different place, I think he's capable of it. All right. We remind everybody, get your head in a different place. Go ahead and check out the syndicated radio show, Both Sides Now. All you have to do to find out where to hear it, find out more, is just go to Madeline.com. Info. Mary Madeline, thanks so much for joining us. I look forward to catching up with you again, and we'll talk about that brown liquor one of these days. Brown liquor, boy, from brown liquor. <laughs> thanks. <Ta-ta. laughs> thanks so much, Mary. Next time you come on the show, if you don't bring summer, at least send it here, then you are in big, big trouble. one eight seven seven newsmax one eight seven seven newsmax if you'd like to join it. So here we go. we got to get to a bunch of things here very quickly. Uh, we have President Barack Obama getting behind Hillary Clinton today. Elizabeth Warren is going to get behind Hillary Clinton tonight. There's talk about Elizabeth Warren as, of course, the vice presidential candidate. There is talk about Donald Trump still having a female problem. And then there are the libertarians, including Gary Johnson, who believes that, wait a minute, we're not just in here for spoilers. We are in here to be honestly looked at as a possibility for president of the United States. It's getting even better. One eight seven seven Newsmax. All right, Rich from White Plains, New York. Gary Johnson too liberal on social issues, but wait a minute, Rich. He says that he's the best alternative. Oh, I, I don't know how that is. I'm squarely in Mary's camp. I mean, she just said what was uh, on my mind. Um, I, I I would have voted Libertarian if it was Austin Peterson, but when Gary Johnson says that securing the southern border is racist. He wants to legalize the gateway drug marijuana, and he doesn't recognize traditional marriages between one man and one woman. I have nobody to vote for, Ed. Well, but wait a minute, then. Let me ask you this. The Libertarian Party claims that they are the alternatives, one way or another. So would you consider Libertarian if indeed you had a... You had someone other than Gary Johnson who wasn't so liberal? Because let's face it, sometimes libertarians lean a little bit more, not quite as far left, but at least a little more right. Would you be looking for them to be an alternative? I I absolutely would be looking for them as an alternative if they didn't lead with their social issues. If they tried to lead with the commonality they have with conservatives, and that's fiscal conservatism, domestic issues, okay, limited government, then yeah. But Gary Johnson's not like that. All right. We appreciate the call. Thanks so much. Ernie from Beckley, West Virginia. I'm sorry. I got 20 seconds. Make a point. Rich, I just want to say that with the liberal Democrats as fractured as they are and the Republicans being fractured, the conservatives, my guys, uh, with them being fractured, it's like they're trying to give each other the job. Um, We were talking about uh, libertarians earlier. I don't think it's about a third party. 
I simply think that it is um, more about a third person. You made your point. There you go. And by the way, Rich was the last guy. That's okay. It's, don't worry about it. I, I actually play Rich every now and then in a small theater place somewhere in White Plains. We appreciate it. Thanks so much for the call. Now we have to give everybody a programming note. As of June 1st, Newsmax TV has been discontinued on Dish and is now unavailable to its subscribers. Newsmax is disappointed by Dish's decision to stop carrying Newsmax TV during this critical election period. It's important to note that Newsmax TV did not charge Dish to carry the network. In fact, we financially benefit Dish and their customers. Customers. If you're as disappointed in their decision as others, please let them know. You, friend, family member, if you subscribe to DISH, we encourage you. Call the number on your screen and ask that Newsmax TV be put back on air. This election is simply too important. Call DISH customer service at 1-800-700-4376 right now and tell them you want your Newsmax TV back on the air. 1-877-NEWSMAX, that's our number. Curtis Lee was going to join us. We'll close out the show. More of your calls next.